There was no button everywhere. You know how those bathroom, how the toilets have the auto flush like it's supposed to happen with the minute your ass cheeks come off the seat that it's supposed to auto flush or you step away from the toilet. Yeah, yeah. Or so, there's that little tiny black button on the side. Okay, there was no black button. There was no handle, oh, no black button. God. This was 100% sensor driven, right? Yeah. Well, it was 100% busted. It's the Scott and Alley Not For Air podcast. The rules are gone. The shirt is untucked. Here's Scott and Alley. So I've made yeah. a decision. I, I pulled everyone in the office. You couldn't leave this one alone. No. Oh, I, in the last episode, we talked about one of our old coworkers being on OnlyFans and then how we thought uh, potentially our old boss might be there too with her. And after I first asked Scott, if I buy a day of OnlyFans, will you look at it? Like I, I almost wanted to make sure that it wasn't a waste of money. And you said no. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not up for it for her. Jason, the producer, said no. Yeah. Then I went into the sales pit, and everyone pretty much said no except for one person. And they said, I'm as curious as you are, Allie. I, I want to know what it is. But then <laughs> here's what made me decide not to get OnlyFans yeah, for what, a day. What did it? I mean, I think everybody has their own set of reasons. And I, you know. It was the waste of money because... The way that some people do it is you subscribe. Mm-hmm. So they set their subscription fee. So this person's was six ninety nine, and I was like, seven bucks, that's no big deal. But then a lot of times what they'll do is that's their initiation, like that's your sign up fee. Yeah. But then if you actually want to see content, then you have to pay like 10, 20, 30, 50, whatever. Oh, it's a sucker you in kind of yes. deal. Yes. Mm-hmm. And and I and I said, I really don't want to spend that money. And then my other point that was brought up from all, a lot of our other coworkers, they said, are you really going to get much different than what you're getting now? And I said, yeah. honestly, <laughs> the graphic stuff is really not what I care to see. I just wanted to see if our old boss showed up in there or not. But they're like, you can't guarantee that he's going to be in the content that you pay for. I don't think he was going to be. I absolutely don't think that that would have happened. You wouldn't. It's potential, and I'm totally speculating, mm-hmm. Maybe uh, he was the videographer or picture taker. I I guess really videographer, (laughs) yeah. Um, At at least at some point. But no, I knowing knowing the parties that are involved here. By the way, I'm shocked you call this individual an old boss. They're in no way a manager over either of us. I was just going to correct myself on that. I meant like an old boss in the building. Yeah, a colleague of ours. He, right, he wasn't our boss. R- no, not at he all. Was an, uh, yeah, he was an old boss in the building. So he was in management. That's That was going to come up as a correction. Okay, uh, well, that being said... Um, yeah, he wasn't over us. I I always looked at it, and, and when I say this statement, I want to be very safe on this. I don't want it to be implied that I'm saying that the person that is doing the content does not have the same moral values. That's not what I'm trying to say. But the individual that was a, a colleague that you, it, the speculation might have been, could that have been the filmographer? Uh-huh. Um, I think his value set on a professional level and the image that he is attempting to put out is way far from the willingness of the individual being filmed. That's is, a really good way to say it. Uh, yes, they are not in alignment as to what they share in this world. Well, somebody maybe, knocked her hips out of alignment. Hey, ho, ho, <laughs> maybe, maybe, um, you know, that might be things that he's into, but not into on a social media platform. No, and I, I think that he is someone that goes, wow, my image needs to stay a certain way. Uh, look, behind closed doors, lights out. I don't give two craps what anybody does. Mm -hmm. That's your own life and your own freak show if you want it to be that. But when you have to have a degree of a public image, there's a level you have to, you know. Right. That's why. You chose it, so you got to live it a certain way. Well, that's why my significant other and I, we have a no sex talk on the air or even in the podcast about him. Like, if you know, let's pretend he was into macaroni and cheese in the bedroom or something oh, hypothetically <laughs> and i could never talk about it for the the reasons that we just gave about this guy because he is in management he's still in management somewhere else but he was in management here 
And my significant other says the same thing. He says, you know, I don't want to be sitting down with somebody who I have to write up or talk to, not in a bad way, but that, that they have to work together. Anything. and Right. And then they're thinking about <laughs> something you said <laughs> on air about our, our personal intimate life. <laughs> did, and I respect that. Did, and I do too. Did did the conversation, I just wish I could have been a fly on the wall for that conversation. Why? You know, well, I'm trying to picture first where it could have happened. Would it have been fun? You don't have to answer this because you'd be breaking the rule. Uh-huh. I'm just letting my mind wander verbally out loud. Okay? Okay, okay. So don't, don't, don't answer. Okay. Was this following a loving session where you're laying there, whoo, well, we can't talk about that anywhere else but here. Or was it one of those moments where, you know, you're standing in the kitchen. Listen, I don't want my b- big dick out on the radio. You know what oh, I'm well, saying? Like, yeah, <laughs> not, not, you say anything, it's going to tarnish it. This is my moment oh to my be God. able to go. It's always How would always it have gone? Moment. How would that have gone? Uh, Either way, it's a good, it's a very good rule to have. Um well, I, I I'll tell you right now that there are uh, my significant other is in a field that I would not want people going in and I mean you know knowing more than oh we're together there there's no need for more than that mm-hmm. yeah yeah definitely <laughs> now the other thing that I teased at the end of last week's podcast was the worst bathroom situation and you said oh I have one and I said I Damn. I wonder if it's the same as my bathroom situation. Bathroom stall situation. If you don't remember, it's okay. Oh, oh, oh. sorry. It just came back to me. Okay. (laughs) Because mine is, and this is nightmarish. When there is a shower curtain for a door. A shower curtain does absolutely nothing. I walked into a public restroom the other day, and there's literally a shower curtain for a door. So I have to put my... What about at home? Let me clarify. Is this only in public or is this at home and in... Oh, no, it's in public. I, first okay. of all, I, I wouldn't have a shower curtain as a door at my house. because Oh, I'm thinking a shower curtain versus a door no, on a shower. No, no, no. Got as it. A, a stall, like yeah. ba- public bathroom. So now I and have to... And it was to, a shower curtain where you take a shit? Yes. <laughs> so I have to put my leg... Underneath the shower curtain, so and like twinkle my little toes, so everybody knows I I'm in here. I'm in here. It was I've never seen that. So as soon as I and I had to go pee so bad. So as soon as I see it, I run in and I pee as fast <laughs> as I possibly can. At least with the door, I just feel like there's more. It's gonna take a minute to open it up, but a shower curtain. You can quickly go, yeah. hi, I'm you, here. You know what? The only thing worse than a shower curtain are the beads that used to hang down from uh, the 1960s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Am I getting my palm red? Yes. Or, or taking a dump. Or my butthole. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's count the lines around that. Uh, what What is your shower stall thing that is... Was well, it that? No, no. You said public bathroom story, so I, I will come back to, to that in a minute. But can I stay on the bathroom door for a minute in oh public? Yes. And this goes both fitting room and bathroom. Mm-hmm. I know I am safe. I'll start with the bathroom. I know I'm safe. God, that looked good. What are you drinking? Oh, this is, oh my gosh, it's so good. This is a Topo Chico blueberry sparkling water. I thought you got it off and the Cherokee reservation the way you just said it. I, I, uh. Tasted it for the first time at my friend Lauren and Shelby's house. And then I think that's where I had it for the first time. And it's funny because where does this come from? Does it come from Texas? Lauren's originally from Texas. So she was saying how this is going to take me a minute to find it. But she was saying how there's just like extra carbonation or something in it. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then I had it and I was like, she's right. There is just something about it that is just an extra... Mm, well, the my can mouth. looked really cool when you were throwing it. Anyway, Allie throwing back White Claws here on the show. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> um, I, I only drink White Claws at concerts. Yeah. I never, mm. I'm just not a White Claw person. It's, any once seltzer blue, doesn't do it. Yeah, once in a blue on a hot day, but yeah, I'd rather just drink wine or something. Anyway. Back to the door. So yes. whether you're in a fitting room or whether you're in a bathroom stall out in a public place, you know you're in a better place that actually gives a crap about the people that have to use whatever the facility, gives changing a crap. room or bathroom, uh-huh. if it's a big door that goes, 
way high all the way down. You ever yes. go to the, you ever go to the bathrooms or the fitting rooms where it's like if I stand up, about the only thing you're not going to see <laughs> is from my nipples to my balls. Yes, and then, yes. But I got to bend over to put pants on. So you you know if I'm trying them on, hate it. Get me a full size door for a fitting room and get me a bigger door for a public restroom w- when I have to play an away game, which is very few and far between. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Did we talk about we have a not a coworker but somebody that we've worked with that her they they had to go out of town for a medical emergency and it was her and her husband and her daughter and her husband hadn't pooped for 6 days. Oh my because god. Because they were at a hospital in a different city a couple hours away for 6 days. And he said as they're getting so close to home I can just smell big flats. We're so close. I can't wait to poop. Who can hold it for six days? Like my body won't even let that happen. Like my body. Six days is way too long. Yeah. Oh my God. When I was in England, they had the doors top to bottom. Yes. It was great. There's There's something for privacy. So much privacy. So much room for activities. Yeah. (laughs) Activities. And I don't know if it's because they actually call it a water closet and they truly treat it like it's a closet because... And I've told this story before. In school growing up, we had stalls, you, like you were saying, you know, where it really doesn't cover a lot, like basically like your oh. nipples to your... It's always the place that's busiest that has this much room with a door from my nipples to my balls. Yes. And we had... the Our stalls were cut off at the top because they were always trying to catch kids from smoking mm. or prevent kids from smoking. So if you're me and I will poop anywhere, that I'm trying to poop, but I'm I'm like... Bending down, so that way I don't have to have create direct contact with the teacher as I'm dropping one. All right, I got to ask you a question. Now. Yeah. This has brought me to another question. Oh, go ahead. <coughs> excuse me. So, You're um, excused. you are you have an ability to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. I respect that. I, I think that's great. I think more women have the ability to do any poop or pee situation mm-hmm. anywhere anytime you could you could be a dirty gas station you're gonna live through it oh, you're yeah. gonna bitch about that bathroom because you know what do the, what do women do first first to notice a good bathroom also first to bitch about a bad bathroom but you'll use it, <laughs> it it's true. remarkable <laughs> you know true. you'll hover around for a couple hours you know and it could be hours no it's like two minutes i'm in i'm out I'm making about- like a soft serve chocolate ice cream Ew. while you're hovering you know the machine you know but anyway Ew. um that all being said it's amazing to me how you have this ability. Now, boys, most of the time, uh, at least the ones, I mean, me, uh, I'm speaking for me. Okay. It, 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 you, I, well, and a couple, I guess other people too. You don't like playing the away game, right? You right, just don't. Right. I just told you the six day story. Was exactly. Was there a point in your life where you wanted to not have somebody be able to just watch you unleash in a bathroom? Or was it birth to where you currently are in life? It doesn't matter if they took the door off the stall. I don't remember ever being like embarrassed except for in school. I think that, well, okay. So Scott and I just talked about this very recently off air. I think it started and it was, it's formulated from my childhood because I grew up traveling on this tour bus. So my family was in the Southern Gospel Band. And so on the weekends, we would be on the tour bus. And there was no really working toilet. Like we could pee in it, but we couldn't poop. Like I've talked about, like I've pooped in a bucket. And when you're traveling that much, you have to adapt to pooping everywhere. So I have literally pooped in every Shoney's, Walmart, Cracker Barrel. um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, Target wasn't around at the time. Hills. Hills. Hills, uh, All the old Hills department store. Yes. Kmart. (laughs) I have pooped in every single public oh. restroom that you just kind of get over it. Plus my body just, it it just says go time. I don't know how people hold it, but I think that it came from my childhood. But now I want to ask my brother, can he go to the bathroom anywhere? So for you, the shame was wiped away by the hand of God in the tour bus. <laughs> yes. um, now that, okay. Because like, I'm wondering, I was going to ask, is there an age? I mean, clearly for you, (laughs) the age is gone. But was there an age? Like, okay, at my house right now, Lydia, door wide open. She'll be in there grunting away, letting Uh letting me know that she's going poop. I'm going poop. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Not with with a cough after either, but, um, you know. (laughs) 
She'll be doing that. What about Gavin? He's what nine? Gavin's ten. a sneaky pooper. He'll go. He'll go in. He'll unload one. Not even flush the toilet on you and oh. come out. I know. I'm working on it. I'm. I don't know where it is. He's going to be that kid that when you go into the public restroom, you be like, you who one. left the anaconda in here? You know. I so. forget that that's something that you have to teach your kids to close the door, uh, flush the toilet, just little yeah. nuances. And there's, it's wild to me that there's some adults who don't know that because, oh, here's, here's one. Let what, me tell the shut you. the door part? Because I'm looking at her. No, well, <laughs> let me tell you something. So I have a friend that, and I, I get this because I've tried to like get a little bit of like MacGyvery on this. If you go to a bathroom, and a public restroom that is, and there's streaks at the bottom, oh. he will take like an empty roll of toilet paper you know, like the cardboard part yeah. and he'll put like a wad of toilet paper on the top of it and uh-huh. like, and clean it. Cause he can't make le- a toilet brush. Yes. He can't leave a stall with streaks in it. He's like, Oh, I thought, but when he walked in, there were streaks. Like he couldn't no, sit down no. because I'll tell you, that's another one. Uh, my kids will not sit down if dad's left, uh, you know, some railroad tracks in the bottom of the toilet yes, bowl. Yes, good. Yeah. That's disgusting. Uh, which I should have cleaned. I thoroughly admit that I should have. And I do. I get right away. Oh, let me get that. You know, it, it, whatever. Yeah. I mean, because I'm one of these people also. God, I am. Uh, I'm not a slob at all. And you know uh-huh. that. You can attest to this. Yeah, I'm but these, you leave streaks. I'm one of these people Woof. that's I'm like, well, if I leave it soap for a little bit and then I'll come back and flush it later. No. I forget to come back and flush it later. No, <laughs> I don't. This is such a guy thing. Yeah. I have dated so many men who leave remnants and it's friggin disgusting. Now, like, you'd only see something attached to the porcelain. It wouldn't be a floater. I don't you know care. That. I don't care. I don't need to see anything that has come out of you. Like, that's disgusting. Okay. So, but the whole thing about him, my friend being in the public restroom and doing this, I'm like, what if there's no cardboard? He goes, I look for stuff around mm. or he's like, sometimes I'll just wad up a huge thing of toilet paper and I will like clean with my hand. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Yes. Because he can't leave the streaks oh, in there. You amputate the hand if I you know. had to do. It. No, I no. know. I said especially because it's a public toilet. That's oh, gross. So uh, the reason I I was asking this was was there a point where you know obviously there's just no shame in your game. You can't answer this. But I'm wondering where the point is where the door decides to be closed and the privacy becomes a key thing. Like right now, Lydia's not going to be five till May. Yeah. So I, she's I think, not thinking privacy. Gavin, uh, he's close to 10. I think he likes, although he still sometimes doesn't close the door when he's doing what he's doing. I, I don't know. I'd Like me, I want a deadbolt on the door. I want here at the radio station, which is an extreme rarity. I will do everything in my power to wait till I get home. But if it can't wait, Mm -hmm. uh, there are times I wish I could like deadbolt the bathroom uh, (laughs) and no one would come in. Like, just let me be. Now, in the women's room, which is directly across the hall from our studio, it is a revolving door. There could be eight of you. There could be a lineup in there. Allie could be blowing gas and and everybody's in there talking like, well, so girl, your nails are just great. (laughs) Oh, excuse me. Uh, so I, I don't Aren't you so glad that the men's restroom is not across from the studio? Oh, God, well, actually, maybe you should be glad that thing has been being terrorized again by somebody. Ew, ew. Oh. Okay, so I think that it comes when you start going to school. Once you start going to school and you realize, you know, there's doors and privacy and strangers, you know, strangers. I think that's where it really starts to formulate. Okay. Unless your parents tell you otherwise. My parents well, Unless didn't. your parents take you on a Jesus bus through Tennessee in the backwoods. And my mom <laughs> always goes to the bathroom with the door open. She still does. Almost. And here's the weird thing. How is this that this has never bothered me my whole entire life? It is what it is. Then I start dating somebody who's very, very private. Mm. Just recently, she came to the house and she was pooping with the door open yeah, you mentioned what so, oh did i okay I somewhere sure. i don't remember where uh, and, but so then now i've gotten to the point of a little annoyed and embarrassed because i'm like mom you're 60 some years old close the door <laughs> isn't that weird but i'm a my bathroom's upstairs and i will leave the door open all the time hoping that he doesn't just like barrel upstairs right now what happens if you hear him coming up the stairs do you like try to kick with your leg like shut the door I mean, the toilet's right by the door oh, okay so i really have no excuse for why i leave it open <laughs> i think it's just that i've always done it this way and my mom's always done it 
So yes, and I it really is something I need to stop doing. I need to I need to make this my time. This is not to literally share. your time. This is the right. This is not to share with everyone. Nobody's time but your time. Right, right. Yeah. Um, I do have to tell you my horrifying public restroom story. Yes. Uh, but I know we have to take a very, very thirty quick thirty second break. So before you do that, mm-hmm. remember to like, subscribe, and share as much as you can to uh, let everyone know. Yeah, this podcast has been a lot about a bathroom. <laughs> yes. Also, we're going to come back and do the um, happy hour drink thing, too. So 30 seconds. Be right back. The Not For Air podcast is brought to you by Allison Aesthetics. What started out as me wanting juicier, plumper lips. Well, then I found out that Allison Aesthetics was so much more. Got this amazing facial. You can see the glow there. And then a little bit of Botox just to get rid of some fine lines and wrinkles and prevent them, too. And then I found out they do hair removal. Yes, please. And it didn't even hurt. I swear, it didn't hurt. Make sure you follow Allison Aesthetics online and book with them today. Okay, we're back with the Scott and Alley Not For Air podcast. And uh, I don't know that our intent was to spend so much time in the restrooms, but it all started from the doors that, uh, well, you had a shower curtain that was a door at a public restroom. That's like, uh, no, that that can't be. That has to have a door. Get the hinges. Right, at least give me... An option for some privacy. Thank you. As opposed to the the plastic rings at the top, which are not holding up anything. I mean, if you're fixing to blow something up. It's not going to hold even tissue paper up. So Thank what's you. your story? Oh, oh so um, at any rate, I'm going to tell you exactly where this happened, too. Uh, so this is years ago. Uh, I was crossing into Canada. Mm-hmm. And normally, I'm the kind of person, you know. I know when my body's ramping up to do something. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, it's gurgling. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's funny. I've sat across from you for, I mean, literally shy of, minutes shy of 18 years. Uh-huh. And you are a remarkable soul because either you don't tell me or it hits you like, because you know, go. she'll be sitting there going, I got to poop. And, and <laughs> out the door she goes. Now, I don't know if that's been brewing for a half hour of the Scott and Alley show. No, it just like, for me, it just comes out of nowhere. Wow. Okay. Yeah. This is it's where like we differ. It's like bippity boppity boo poo. <laughs> this is where we differ. So I know that it's like a ramping up, you know, like I know, like it's, it's, it, it's a, it's like climbing the roller coaster. I'm uh-huh. like, oh, we're going to get there. And, and many of the times I can hold off, like I've said, <laughs> till I get home. And his colon, it's yeah. like that roller coaster. Tick, 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 tick. You know what? It ticks up the roll. Mm-hmm. Anyway, okay. Keep well, going. there are two occasions in my life, literally two, and I'm 53 years old. There are two occasions in my life, uh, and I've told the one story somewhere once before where I was driving home in uh, back when I lived in Buffalo, driving up Maple Road, and my dad was on a bicycle riding up Maple Road. This is a busy four-lane road either side, right? Two and two. Mm-hmm. And, and it, three and three, I think it is. that Whatever. And I had to go so bad. I was a mile and a half, two miles from my house, and I blew past my dad on a bicycle riding it <laughs> so I could get home and drop one, and I barely made it in the house, right? Then my dad comes in and goes, Scott, because he had a huge voice. Did you drive past me on Maple Road? No, Dad. Nope, nope. I was coming down Young's Road a totally different way. I, it must have been the same kind of car. Oh. What did he want for you to pick him up? So I if I would have picked him up, I would have taken a shit right on Maple Road. In my pants, it would have happened. I just think it's funny he's on a bike ride, but then he wants to be picked up. Anyway. I don't know why he was on a bike. Either way, I would have felt, you know, it, it, the thing to do would have been pull over and been like, Do you want Dad, to ride? Yeah. Would you like to throw the ba- bike in the back of the car and I'll give you a ride? Or, you know. That was not an option. Okay. So that was the one, the first time in my life where it hit me like, boom. And I'm like, uh, I, I, I have to go. <laughs> like Second one. Okay. <laughs> now here we are coming into Canada. Now Canada, it, it's hit or miss. Okay. So uh, if you have, you know, obviously nowadays to leave the country or go anywhere, you got to have proper, proper documentation, mm-hmm. enhanced license, passport, whatever the case may be. What you can't control is how many people are crossing the border at that time. Uh, You could be the next car up. You could be 10 cars back. You could be the next car up, but they're really interrogating the person going Mm -hmm. across the border. Well, I... It, it, we we were sitting behind the one that was really getting the drilling from the border patrol. I mean, yeah. it, I don't know what was happening. Well, it's it's. I mean, the sweat is coming across oh, the brow. Yeah. You I know, I mean, I'm like, Ooh. 
So we finally, and, and then, thank God, getting up to the border box, it was just nah, yeah, citizenship, what are you doing, uh, okay, how long are you going to be here, have a nice day. Mm -hmm. So the have a nice day, shortly as you are crossing the border, right as you cross the border, there's like, um, I'm going to say a restroom area, you know, like mm -hmm. where, where you can go in. Now, it's not duty free, although it was duty full when I was done with it, but <laughs> duty free that don't know it's it's a store that you don't have to pay certain taxes on coming in and out of the border. In case anyone's hearing this that does not know what a duty free shop is, mm -hmm. there are you know at the border of of uh, Canada and the U.S. I don't know about Mexico, never been there. So me uh, neither. So anyway, right a, right after you cross into the Canadian border, there is a bathroom, and I'm like I I gotta go. So <laughs> we get in, yeah. and um, literally I went in there and I paid. No attention, no attention whatsoever. Went in there and it was, it was hell. Okay. It was just, it was. What do you mean? Like you didn't pay any attention? Well, I'm coming to that. Okay. So, uh, there was maybe enough toilet paper for one swipe. <gasps> Allie, I'm not kidding you when oh, I tell you this would have been a half a roll sitting, okay? This was how intense this oh. was, okay? So, oh, no. I, I did the old, all right, pants are at the ankles, there's nobody in here. I quick ran to the next bathroom, oh. grabbed a roll, came back. Now, hold on, this is where it gets better. So, I'm waiting in a public restroom for this to auto flush. There was no button everywhere. You know how those bathroom, how the toilets have the auto flush like it's supposed to happen with the minute your ass cheeks come off the seat that it's supposed to auto flush or you step away from the toilet. Yeah, yeah. Or so, there's that little tiny black button on the side. Okay, there was no black button. There was no handle, oh no black button. God. This was 100% sensor driven, right? Yeah. Well, it was 100% busted. So... After I busted the toilet with you know what, I stood up. I'm like, oh no, it it won't go. Now here's the problem. <laughs> He's like doing a little dance. Here's the problem. <laughs> I gotta keep wiping. This thing is becoming the Mount Everest of public restrooms between the toilet paper that I have to oh, deal with God. this situation, if you will. Yes, and it still won't flush. <sighs> Nothing's happening. <laughs> You're like, I believe am, me. There's lots of movement now. Oh, yeah. Now. The thing about it is I can kind of relate to your friend that you were talking about that has to clean out the toilet bowl. I never want to be the person to leave it behind uh -uh, no. because you I never know who's coming in. Well, one, I don't necessarily need my brand being left in someone's nostrils. You know, yeah. and for, I, I, I'm not a big fan of that. Like, you know, it's like I like to be present myself as a, a hygiene, clean, you know, well put together person as much as possible. I can't even look the person in the eyes when I'm, I'm leaving a, a poopy stall, you uh, know? No. And I'm going to tell you right now. By the time I got everything handled back there and nothing would flush and the toilet paper is now as high mounted to the top of the seat, oh I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, this ain't my problem. They don't have a black button in Canada right. to make this, this some bitch auto flush. Yeah. So whoever's got to come in and clean this up, not only are they going to have to do plumbing in a shit filled toilet, but it's going to have a mountain of toilet paper. Yay. high. I got in that car and I'm like, we got to go as fast as we can oh. right now. Like the poop police were going to pull me over and be like, why didn't you flush? Oh my God. And you know, the guy who has to clean that out oh. basically has to use gloves and a bag and has to like yep. take it out of the, the toilet and put it in a bag just to get to the situation. And if you've ever watched House Hunters, the television show oh on HGTV... God. Yeah, that guy is one of the guys that just bought a ten million dollar house for two thousand square feet, and his wife breeds butterflies. That's the guy. This guy's making a million doing that. Oh in Canada. my gosh, I've never heard this story. Oh, but that's I. I I'm glad you didn't run into anybody on the way out because oh, my no, thing. But is, I ran on the way out. Yeah, but that's my thing. Is like it's not even like the smell. It's I just don't want to look at anybody and for them to see what I what gift. Yeah. Are we going to judge me? Like, I know. Oh, I, damn, though, like, man, uh, look at that thing. And that's the funny thing is like, okay, you're going to judge me and I'm never going to see you again. But I'm still afraid of that judgment. Okay. Can I tell you one other secret about public poop? Yeah. <laughs> what a weird one. I'm under the impression that your stool, if you will, let's say it's a lengthy one. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm under the impression they swell and absorb the water in the bowl. There's no human way possible that some of the things that I've seen in public restrooms could have passed through a human's colon. 
<laughs> Am I right? Um, it, does it absorb? No, and, I don't, is it I, no, sponge-like? Here's the thing. I don't even. I don't even look. I, I if I even see some toilet paper or anything in there, then I automatically walk out. So I have not even assessed that. But I will say. So I have a friend who has kids. And her kids have the biggest poops I've ever seen in my oh, life. God. So, and I always go, how did your kid, how did that thing come out of your kid? It's weird. I've seen my friend's kids poops. Mm-hmm. Not a stranger's. But so you're right. There is something that you question. And you know what? I bet you it's a little kid that left it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. They have, I don't know how, maybe just straight colon, straight intestines. I'm not sure how, like... It irons itself out in the end, but it is some of the largest craps I've ever seen. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> I, I don't get for it. Sure. I, I really I don't know. get it. Now, right. we have an option. Yeah. You can either throw me the drink or you can save it for next week because I had no idea that the poop convo was going to take off the way that it did. The only thing I'll say about it is I noticed something. because so I've been going to a lot of mixers lately, a lot of like business to business mixers and yeah. networking events. We've got and, one we're going to tomorrow. Yes. And I've noticed something that I do, and I don't know if you do this. So I am like a beer person or I'll drink like um, a Manhattan. So there are certain things that I like to drink. But I noticed when I go to happy hours, <laughs> I order something totally different. I you like do? Tito. Yes. I like Tito's and club soda, but I find myself, that's my go-to happy hour drink because it's easy. Because if they're making a Manhattan, it's a process. Yeah. A beer, I'm, I'm not like, I'm... I feel like with a Tito's and club soda, I'm getting off, giving off an air of air, air, uh, air of a little bit more professional. Sure. Where beer seems to be like, Hey, me and the buddies are having beers. You <laughs> yeah. Know? Right. Right. So and I, beer's very filling very quickly. Yes, exactly. That <laughs> too. Tito's and tonic and Tito's. You can throw them back all afternoon. Oh, right. Now. Oh my God. Which <laughs> that's dangerous. So I noticed, and I didn't know if you did this too, is that you order something different when you're at a happy hour. Um, okay. It, uh, here's the thing. Like I, you're trying to impress people. Um, now happy hour or, or a, a, a mixer of sorts. Well, these mixers happen at a lot of happy hours. Like yeah. it's, they tend to be, or like I went to a conference and they had like a little mixer happy hour afterwards. So with that, you're, you're, you're networking okay. with business people. Okay. Yeah. Um, if I'm going to be in that situation and I feel like, I mean, it, Sometimes I won't even carry around a drink. I mean, sometimes I'm just like, no, nah, that's not my thing. But if I'm going to do it for whatever reason, it's been one of those weeks, I'll have one. We're both at something together. I rarely go for beer. And the reason I, I but it's not different from, um, you know, what I would normally drink. But I won't go for beer because for whatever reason, if I drink one beer, I smell like I just pounded a keg. Yeah. I don't know why, but it just, it like comes out of my pores. I'm like, Bleh. That's the other thing, too. And I don't want to feel bloated at a happy hour mixer thing. Right, right. Um, y- you would normally do the uh, Tito's and, and um, Club, Club Soda. soda. Mm-hmm. And you're right. I mean, there's a certain... I'm going to go mm-hmm. with classiness. Here's yeah. the other rule, too. Don't get a tall glass double if you're at a mixer. It does. <laughs> it looks like you're there to drink. If you right. get the small one, a small one, you are there to to sip and chat. This is yes. something that I've I've noticed over time. You see somebody or a glass of wine works because you know rarely are you double fist and wine unless you're with Allie on Sundays. Right. Uh, oh, that's mimosas. <laughs> sorry. So uh, or wine. The smaller glass, and uh, I mean mine is always I, my go-to drink if I'm going to have anything but beer is primarily going to be a Jameson and ginger ale. That's uh-huh. my that's my go-to. Uh, I don't really do vodka. I don't, uh, I mean, I can on a rare occasion, but uh, I, beer is just, I'm, I'm out of my beer part of life. I don't, I never liked craft beers and no offense to anybody that does them. It's just, I don't like chewing them and I'm just done with beers. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, I'm not, mm-hmm. you know, all right, if I'm in a Bills game, I'll have a beer with you, you know, but that's yeah. where I'm going to have it. I'm not going to bring a mixed drink there. But I'm telling you, the rule is the smaller the glass yep. and it's got the long red stick out of it and you can sort of stand there and play with it a little bit and and, and it's a sipping kind of a, a setting. You get a big tall one, you are there to rock the party and, and it's not always a party to rock. No, it's never a party to rock usually. Usually it's 
We're drinking one or two, Mm -hmm. and then we're going home because we've just talked business. And I need to make sure that I remember, (laughs) number one, your name. And number two- We just talked business. I don't want to talk privacy in five minutes. You know what I mean? Right, right. I want to remember your name, where you worked, (laughs) and what our next plan of action is. Yeah. So so yours is still a Jameson and Ginger, just a short. Yeah, it it definitely has to be a small, uh, you know- But isn't it funny how we change our drink? For a happy hour, I noticed this. It's the image. Yes, yes. And I noticed a lot of people, when I'm at these mixers, order Tito's and club soda. Well, because also, it's a clear drink. And there is something about a clear drink Mm -hmm. that, A, makes you wonder... Are they sneaky and just drinking club soda? Number one, or Sprite. Uh, oh, I never even think that. Oh, I've I've thought that. I'm like, okay, that's an interesting way to make it appear. Because not everybody drinks, and right. that's good. I mean, some people drink too much. Some people don't drink enough. Some, well, you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> but that being said, um, you know, some people are just doing it because they're like, well, I'd like it to give the impression without people questioning that. Because there are people that get self-conscious about both sides of that. Yes. But I'm telling you, watch out for the ones that are at a mixer that are sitting at the bar that either have the tall drink or are drinking the beer. Because I believe you're drinking a beer in two ways. If you're at a mixer, and this is a professional mixer, one, and I'm not judging, I'm just saying this is my impression. One is you're young and at a mixer, and you're still trying to figure out, like, (laughs) Mm -hmm. maybe one of those hard drinks might not be so smart for you because Mm -hmm. you won't remember the name of the place of business and everything else Mm -hmm. but i'm figuring that or you've reached a point of age where you're really just there you're not looking to make a lot of business connections anymore you're just warm in that seat you're nearer to the retirement age of it all you Uh know it's it's not a big thing but i gotta tell you that's that's the rule i would go with that's the etiquette it's more of an etiquette yeah than it is a flavor taste thing yep and it really is. It really is. Appearance is so much now, especially when you're networking mm-hmm. in this era. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which also, one last thing, because you were talking about not everyone drinking. That's why I do like that a lot of these mixers, I've noticed, they have a non-alcoholic option. Which is because, which is great. Right, right. And, and I'm not talking beers. I'm saying they will say, oh, this is, they have a lot of like non-alcoholic vodkas and whiskeys and all different kinds of booze now. So that makes it a great option for that that Wait, crowd non-alcoholic too. booze. It's still booze. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Oh, so it's got like a flavor similar to without the alcohol. Yeah. Let yeah. me ask you a question. What if you're at a mixer and someone has a drink with an umbrella in it? Are you going to take them seriously? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, they're fun. Let me go talk to them. Travel agency? Hawaii yeah. in our future? Yes. Agreed. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> oh, you guys have a great week. We'll see you next week. Bye. Well, that was fun. Wasn't that fun? That was fun. Do us a favor, will you? Subscribe. Share the Scott and Alley Not For Air podcast. Touch our buttons. We know you want to.